Hello everybody, welcome back to video number two in this sublimation series where we are adding photos to fabric with the process of sublimation. Now, if you're wondering what sublimation is, check out video number one, should be up above uh, this video in this series. In this video, we are starting at the computer. Before we ever move over to messing with fabric or printers or heat presses, we are starting right here at the computer. Now I watch a lot of TikTok and one of the trending uh, TikTok videos is, can we skip to the good part? Ah, you know, <laughs> if, if you watch TikTok, you know what I'm saying. But can we skip to the good part? No, uh, we're gonna leave those fabrics right where they are for the time being. We are starting here at the computer to get the best results when sublimating photos or images or text onto fabric. Now, uh, I use a program called GIMP, G-I-M-P, and uh, it's a free photo editing software, much like Photoshop. And in this process, I'm gonna be walking through GIMP, but you can use any photo editing software that you like to use to do this part. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you four simple steps uh, that I do to my photos before I ever even print them. So I'll be showing you that and just a little disclaimer, I am not a photo editing genius or professional. I know about enough to make me dangerous, <laughs> but I think these four tips will help you achieve really great uh, results when printing your photos for sublimation. And then I'm gonna show you a little bonus a little bonus tool in GIMP for, uh, well, we'll get to that here in a second. So let's go ahead and switch over to GIMP. My desktop is gonna look a little crazy for a second. We are going to open GIMP. Now the version that I use is 2.10.14. There might be newer versions and there's probably a lot of older versions out there, but uh, no matter what version you're working in, the tools are gonna be the same. They just might be located in different areas. So here is GIMP on my screen. The very first thing we're going to do is import a picture. So we're gonna to go to File and Open. We're gonna locate the photo uh, wherever you have saved it. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna go on the desktop. I'm gonna to go to Lisa's Pictures. And I have this photo that we're going to edit to make a pillow in the end of this series, okay? So I'm gonna open up this photo. It's gonna ask me if I want to rotate it. And I'm just gonna say yes, go ahead and rotate it for me so it's in the right direction. Now, before I move forward, because I want you to see the changes that I'm making and see what, what a difference it makes, I'm gonna open this photo a second time, which is not gonna be necessary for you when you're working with photos, but I want you to be able to see the differences we're making for video purposes. So here we are. If you look right here uh, in this top corner, I have both photos. They're exactly the same. And I'll be able to toggle back and forth so you can see the changes that we're making and why I go through this process. So four features that I like to work with, and there's probably more. Like I said, I'm, I'm not an expert at photo editing. There's probably so much in this software you can do that I am uh, not even familiar with all the tools. So feel free to experiment with everything. And believe me, there's thousands of videos here on YouTube from really knowledgeable GIMP experts that will show you how to use the software much better than I can. <laughs> so here's our original photo. This is the one that we're going to edit. So usually when I bring in a photo, the first thing I do is I go up to this top bar and I choose colors. A menu will pop down. And uh, the first thing I like to do is go to auto and uh, we're gonna click on white balance to see if that affects the photo at all. Yes, it took out a little bit of the haziness. So keep your eye on the photo. I'm gonna toggle to the original photo and you'll see that slight difference. See that? 
That's the original. And this is after using white balance. So when you bring in a photo, ch check with the, uh, the auto and the white balance and see if it makes a good difference. Sometimes it will and sometimes it doesn't do anything at all. The next thing I like to do is to go back up into colors and we're going to check the exposure of this photograph. When you click on exposure, a new box will open up right here and you have some sliding scales that you can play with. So you can adjust uh, the black level with a sliding scale. You can adjust this back and forth and see what kind of results you get. You can also uh, mess with the exposure. You can make it darker, like maybe the sun was too bright and you want to darken the photo. This is where I would do that. And at any point, you've made some changes and you're not quite happy with them. You can always go to reset and it brings it back to the original and you can start over. So let's adjust the exposure just a little bit. I'm going to brighten this photo up just a touch. And I'm going to adjust the black level just a smidgen. I think that looks really good. So I'm going to say, okay. So now let's toggle back to the original photo. See my pink shirt? It looks much better, right? The third thing that I like to adjust if needed, uh, go to colors and saturation. And we're gonna see if we can't make these colors pop a little bit more. Uh, so keep an eye on the sky area. This again has a sliding scale that you can uh, adjust and tweak those colors just a little bit. Actually, the saturation was pretty good on this photo, uh, making the few changes we've already done, uh, but I did move it up just a little bit and I'm gonna say, okay. So let's toggle to the original photo. See how the blue in the sky really starts to pop, uh, making those changes. And then the fourth tool that uh, I usually check in my photographs before I save them, will go up to colors and brightness and contrast. Again, you have a sliding scale that pops up and you can adjust both the brightness and the contrast. And we'll just play with those a little bit. See that? Uh, and we'll slide the contrast. It is possible to do too much or to do uh, not enough. I'm going to hit reset and we will bump up the contrast just a smidgen on this photo. It's actually pretty good right now the way it is. Just a smidgen. There we go. The brightness is actually pretty good. So I'm going to say, okay. Now, let's toggle back to the original photo. See those changes? Now, uh, a lot of the times, the cameras are so good, even cell phone cameras are so good that you don't really have to mess with the photos at all or just a little tiny bit, right? Uh, and if you were just to open up this photo and print it, chances are it would not look horrible. But there are some changes that we can do before we ever even save and print it that would make this photo really pop on the fabric. See that? Believe it or not, those small differences make a huge world of difference in the final printing. All right, so as a bonus, we've covered the four things that I like to do to my photos every once in a while. I have a photograph that there's something in the photo that uh, I wish wasn't there. And I do sublimation on fabric, photos on fabric for clients as a service through my Etsy shop. And every once in a while, they will send me a screenshot and you'll see little icons at the bottom of the screen. Or maybe they took a screenshot off of Facebook and you have some stuff up above the photo that you don't want. And that's not going to go away if you crop the photo. 
So sometimes there's little tweaks and little things I wanna remove from a photograph. So I'm gonna show you as a little bonus before we export this photograph, uh, one of my favorite tools in GIMP is called the clone stamp. Again, I'm not an expert. I'm not a photo uh, editing expert by any means. Uh, and I know enough to make me dangerous, but we're gonna zoom in on this edited photo just a little bit. I'm holding down the control button on my keyboard and using the little wheelie on my mouse to zoom in. And uh, we're gonna look right above my head. There was a street lamp there. We're gonna get rid of the street lamp for the photo. So uh, I want you to look over here on this tool menu. You can also find this under tools. Uh, if you go through, uh, you can, what am I trying to say? This might be a menu that you need to uh, add so that it stays on your screen, right? But uh, clone stamp tool, that is right here. I'm gonna click on that. When I do, I can adjust the size of it. I can adjust the hardness of it. I can adjust the opacity of it again. This is not a GIMP tutorial. And uh, so if you wanna really learn how to use the clone stamp tool, I do suggest watching a GIMP video on the cl clone stamp tool, okay? Uh, I'm not messing with any of this. I can adjust the size a little bit. You see the size right here on my screen. It's pretty small. And we're gonna leave it right there at a 27. So we're gonna zoom in on this uh, lamp post right over top of my head. To use the clone stamp tool, I'm holding down the control button on the keyboard. And I'm gonna click on a area in the photo. See how that little circle is staying there when I move my mouse? It's actually taken a stamp of that portion of the photograph. And now when we click on the photo with our mouse, a left, yeah, a left click, it's actually going to stamp the image that is in that circle. And you can even drag your mouse and it'll stamp whatever is inside that circle. And see how I'm just erasing that little uh, lamppost? It's gone. I'm gonna move my mouse right above this stray hair that is sticking up and I'm going to take a stamp control click and I'm going to erase this little hair that is sticking up right so I've clicked on the photo and I'm just dragging my mouse and you'll see that what is ever inside that circle that is what it's copying let's do it with this little stray hair right here I'm going to go right below it Hold down control, click the mouse, and now we can drag right over top of that hair and copy everything that is inside that circle. So that is one way that I remove small little things from my photos. And when you zoom out, you can't even tell that you've done anything. So let's move this back in the screen. There you go. So this is the edited version. All the colors have been adjusted and we removed the little lamp post above my head and a couple of little stray hairs. Let's go back and look at the original photo. See that? See that change? Small little changes, but yet makes a huge world of difference when printing. So we've done all of the changes that I'm gonna do to this photograph. We're ready to save it. So we're going to go to file and I like to export my photographs. So I'm going to scroll down to export as and uh, let's save this right on my desktop. And we're going to call this uh, Lisa's Hello. <laughs> and we're going to say export. 
another box will pop up and we just click export. I don't change any of the settings that are the default. I just click export. And there we go. We have saved all the changes from the four different things that I like to adjust. And we removed a couple of stray hairs and a lamp post above my head. Now in the next video, we're not done yet. We're still going to crop this and resize it for printing. So stay tuned to the next video.